you ever wondered why every Russian weapon is a variant of the AK, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, guys. Like and comment. The comment section is out of control. Get in there. YouTube will probably shut me down over you guys, but it will be worth it, guys. The biggest supporter of the channel right now, Brownells. Brownells is a huge supporter. Uh, discount code right there. Go check them out. And a big thank you to them. And also, for this particular video, a big thank you to 80% Arms and Fair Lambs Faraday Clothing. Go check them out. A big thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Ladies, gentlemen, my often forgotten, most certainly not by me, MP5s. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about a very interesting design, and that is going to be the VTAS or otherwise the KUSA KP9. So this is a pretty interesting concept, and I'm not forgotten weapons. I'm not going to get into the history of it other than to say that the Russians needed something in a smaller caliber, in a submachine gun type weapon that would work with nine millimeter, that would be good for police work or close quarters work for special operations. And ultimately of those designs, the Vityaz came about. Now, of course, why couldn't they just adopt the MP5? Well, they're Russians. So of course it's gotta be some variant of the AK. What's very interesting about this design and about the KP9 in general is that there are is a lot of parts commonality with the AK-74, AK-100 series of rifles. We'll talk about that as we go through it. But what's going to be more important is our full disclosure. So what is my relationship with KUSA? How did this review come about? So to be honest, I really wanted to get my hands on one of these because I wanted to do a review. Previously, we did a review of the PSA AKV. And a lot of people do consider this to be a competitor to the PSA AKV. So I asked them if I could get this um, for review. They sent one along. Ammunition provided by Barnells. We have about, as of this time of this video, I want to say, how many, Micah? Like three? God knows, three, four. Yeah. Three, four thousand. Um, I have ended up really liking this, kind of full disclosure on that. But uh, point is, no exchange of money, uh, weapon, ammunition is provided. So that is that. Let's go ahead, let's get into this review, let's talk about what the hell we have going on with this thing, about how I have it set up, and uh, we'll have some fun. Let's do it. Now, before we get into this review, we should probably shoot it, because this is a very fun gun to shoot. So, the KUSA, KP9 is a direct blowback weapon. It is chambered in 9mm, feeds from a proprietary magazine that works with the Vityaz as well, and it is overall just a very cool weapon. So we're going to do what the Marines love. I'm going to go tip to butt. So starting at the very tip right here, we have, <laughs> we have our muzzle device. So to be clear, um, this is not the muzzle device that comes with the weapon. This is a Delta Tech muzzle device. And... Um, the uh, muzzle device that does come with the KP9 or the KR9, if you have the rifle version, um, is the pretty much an exact replica of what comes with Vityavs, and that is kind of a cool thing about it. But we wanted to include some products that are currently in use with Russian special operations, so we use the Delta Tech. So the Delta Tech is, it is a flash hider, and uh, the question is, is why is that flash hider so big? Because for example, we have a flash hider on this MP5 right there, and this does a very good job of keeping flash to an absolute minimum. So why is it big? Well, I mean, the best way we can describe it is with the meme, it's just Russia. You know, if, if, if small flash hider good, big flash hider much better. And that's pretty much what they, that was a bad impression. That's pretty much what happened with Delta Tech, and it does do a phenomenal job of complete and utter flash elimination. So if you wanna come in here and kinda of take a closer look at it, you can see that we have ports along the sides. You can see all the muzzle burns coming out there. Um, under nods, this is a zero emissions of muzzle flash uh, type weapon. So it is very awesome to shoot under nods. Um, it is a very cool muscle device. Um, they're not too hard to get a hold of, so definitely go and check those out. Now, one way that the KP9 does differ from the Vityaz is in, of course, the thread pitch. We have half by 28 on this guy right here, and on the Russian version, we have their crazy Russian thread pitch, which, of course, wouldn't be very good for you guys because that means none of your suppressors would fit this, and this is an awesome, awesome suppressor hose. So 
uh, I'm glad that they did not uh, have a crazy thread pitch. So we have that there. Now, from there, we have what looks like a gas system. And you would think so, but this is not a gas system because this is a direct blowback firearm. So this is where it gets really interesting in my mind. So this gas block is just there for the front sight post and of course for the looks because this gas tube is not, it is a gas tube, but it's more of a guide for the mass also off of the bolt carrier group, which is this, the bolt, bolt carrier, the mass at the front, it's all just one piece. Now, that might seem a little odd, but the fewer moving parts you have in a system, the more reliable that system is gonna be. And one thing that you can say about a simple blowback system, especially like the KP9 here, is while the recoil can be a little bit more stout than say an MP5 or an MPX, um, they are very, very stupidly reliable weapons because they are so simple. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pop up the dust cover. I'm gonna show you what I mean by this. So funny enough, I know Robski had a lot of problems with his. Um, ours unlocks absolutely no problem. So we have the recoil spring right here. Um, AK recoil spring, right? Good old Russians. So we have that guy right there. We of course have our bolt carrier and our bolt. And as you can see right there, not a normal system, not a piston, not gas driven, but simply mass added for a direct blowback system. The added mass, of course, controls the speed of the recoil, which controls how quickly the weapon is cycling and functioning. And so beyond that, we just have that guide in there to ensure that everything is in working order. Another thing you can look at right here is, uh, I mentioned it before, but we have a, it's all one piece. There's no separate bolt. This is all one solid piece together that moves together. And that is a very simple, very reliable system. So that's what we got right there. Pretty cool, um, adds to the reliability, but of course it's not quite as easy on the recoil. So what we're gonna do right, right here is the simple gas blowback system is awesome. However, it is also a little bit harsh on that recoil. So what we'll do right here is we will go ahead and we will show that. So to show that recoil, we'll have a special guest come in here in just a moment, and he will show you the differences between the KP9 and the MP5. Please be my guest. How many rounds do you want? Uh, give me five. How'd it feel? Uh, not too bad. Yeah, very, pretty, very pretty comfortable. It's a good ride. All right, let me know in the MP5. Very good. I up on the last one, but it's okay. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you know, the trigger's a little bit, a uh, little bit not as good compared to the KP9. Right. Uh, how'd the recoil feel? Recoil pattern for the MP5 much more preferred. Is that uh, trigger or the trigger on the KP9 felt a lot better? I agree. Okay. I agree. Thank you. So the MP5, very smooth recoil impulse, and that is a roller delayed system. Now, pistol caliber carbines becoming a lot more popular, um, and there is a difference. The MP5 slash SP5 in this case from Heckler & Koch is a really good submachine gun and not a really good pistol caliber carbine. And the reason for that isn't, uh, you know, feel or how it loads or anything, but it really comes down to the trigger. So let me explain for a moment. The trigger on the MP5 is pretty slow overall. It's a long pull and it takes a lot to single fire rounds from this SP5. Now on full auto, trigger really doesn't fucking matter. You hold that bitch to the rear and that thing's just going to let loose. And on the MP5 with such a smooth cyclic rate and as low as the recoil is, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal, probably the best submachine gun on the planet. Now, when it comes to it being a PCC, terrible trigger, sucks. Now, with the KP9, the KP9 has an AK trigger, and honestly, AK triggers are really freaking good. So what that means is when I'm having to fire round after round, that reset is super short, and it's easy to pull that trigger, and I can run this thing so much faster than I can in SP5. So when it comes to differences between PCCs and SMGs and whether a good submachine gun is a good PCC, not always. Because again, like we said before, MP5, great submachine gun, not the best PCC. Fit Yaz, probably good at both, but honestly, if you're gonna be using it as a PCC, probably much better. And that is why I think that the KP9 is a better pistol caliber carbine 
candidate. Now, going from all of that, let's talk about how I had this guy set up and what we have here. So obviously we don't have the original furniture. So we're gonna pop up a little picture right here of the original furniture that is on the KP9. So obviously we have modified it quite a bit. The normal KP9 furniture is fine. It's your typical AK-74 type furniture. No problems there, but certainly it can be upgraded like many other things. And of course you guys know that I love Zenico. So we do have Zenico furniture on this guy and it really does improve the feel of the KP9 in my mind. So we have the upper and lower right here. And then what we've done is because the Surefire light is both uh, white light and IR capable, I have that kind of mounted right up there. And we have our pressure pad from our light right here going to the back of this grip right here so I can activate that guy. Now, as far as the laser device, this is a Purst 4. This is also from Zenico. And I have that on the side there to utilize for night vision shooting. I'm basically just tilting the gun, rolling the gun over, and just engaging on that button. Again, it, it can get a little bit dicey setting up a, a laser device and a light on a very compact system like this. And this is kind of what I've ended up liking quite a bit on my KP9. Now, um, you're going to get, you're gonna have to find something that's going to work for you. But this is what has worked very well for me. Now, going back from here, here's where it gets really interesting in my mind when it comes to the KP9. Um, the Vit Yaz has several different variants out there. One of the variants has a side rail right here for mounting optics. As we know, in the United States, not a lot of people are using side mounted optics. Now, on the KP9, they chose to use the top rail, which is riveted into place. You know, when I first saw it, I thought that there was no way that was the way it was actually done in the Vit Yaz, but sure enough, it was. And I was very skeptical that this thing would at all hold zero. But sure enough, this is perhaps as of this video being done, probably one of the more accurate pistol caliber carbines that I've owned. So to show that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna step up uh, to about 120. We're gonna take some shots on a uh, steel silhouette and we're gonna see how it does. All right, KP9, 120, Ipsix targets. Easy guys, um, this is a very capable weapon. We'll step up to the 80. We'll take some shots on a couple different targets to show you how that works. All right, we're gonna hit those three targets just going across uh, about 80 right here. Easy. Cool. I love this gun. So when it comes to our optic rail, um, we have absolutely no problems holding zero when our optic is mounted. Now, it also comes down to the Zenico rail. Uh, because that bitch is hammered straight into the receiver, I haven't had any drift of zero when it comes to the laser or anything like that. A couple of interesting things here. Uh, a weapon design is made or broken based off of its magazines. So when it comes to the KUSA, the KP9, it is an exact replica of the Vityaz magazines. And these are polymer and they are steel reinforced and they're a pretty simple design uh, and they're extremely reliable. Um, I've had about 10 of these. I did have one breaks out of the package, but you know, manufacturing defects, but all the other ones, um, They've run absolutely very, very well. And you can also get the Russian ones, the Puff Gun mags, and those also run very well. But for me personally, I have no problems with the KUSA magazines. The only thing I could possibly say about them is the fact that they are a little bit pricey, which kind of sucks when it comes to this weapon. So that's kind of a, that's kind of a downer. But what's good about reloads on the KP9, as you can see right here, the magazine well is beveled. So it is a very simple reload and is very much so more like an MP5 than it is like an AK as far as releasing and locking into place. So what I found is with the MP5, a lot of times when you push it in, you kind of got to give it that little bit of back. You know, kind of got to push it back a little bit to get that thing to lock into place. And that absolutely is what has kind of worked for me when it comes to the KP9. So I'll seat it and then I'll push it back and that will lock into place almost every time. Now compared to the MP5, and I know I'm doing a lot of comparison, but this is kind of the king of all things nine millimeter. Um, when you lock these in, 
and once you're once you need to do a reload it's kind of a bitch because you have to lock the weapon up magazine out new magazine in and then of course slap it to get it into place and the reason for that is you can't take a full 30 round magazine and seat it well you can but you're probably going to cause some damage to something on the weapon so you can of course download your magazine to 28 and that way you could simply you know seat the magazine in and then you know charge it but what i like about the kusa mags is that with a full 30 rounder you can pretty easily get this guy seated into the back just by giving it that little bit of backward push and then so again it is very ak like in the reload you get the weapon magazine in and you simply charge the weapon and you're going to be good to go so that is a good thing on the kusa so when it comes to this, of course, I've added the Zenico RP2. I like that on the charging handle. It just feels a little bit better to me. You should be aware that it is a Vityaz slash KP9 specific charging handle cover from Zenico. So make sure that you get that. And that's what I have going there. On the safety, the safety is completely compatible with all AK safety. So whatever you want to put on there, that's going to work. Honestly, the one that comes from KSA is fine, but an enhanced safety like a Krebs would be way better. So we have the weapon disassembled and as you can see right here, all normal AK triggers work. So we have an ALG trigger in there, which is kind of my go-to when it comes to AK triggers. And this guy is fast. So those triggers are phenomenal. Now, of course, we can't go through a Grantham video without ghosting a trigger. So we're going to be ghosting too, because we have an original VITYAS trigger as well as the ALG. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with the original trigger on my buddies, actually my camera guys, who loved my KP9 so much that he got his own. So we're gonna go ahead, get that charged, make sure trigger's good with his sling right here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and ghost this trigger together. So filling into it, very typical AK trigger where we have that very light pressure that gives us a lot of play, but we have gradually building pressure until we have that let off right there, hit that wall, hit that let off. Charging again, checking the reset, short reset. And that's a great thing about AK triggers is once you get going on them, it's not hard to get fast on them. That is a maybe four and a half pound let off. That is very nice. Now let's go ahead and compare that to the ALG trigger. So compared to the ALG trigger, we have a little bit of play in it. We hit that immediate wall, there we go maybe a two pound let off, it's scary fast. Okay, checking the reset. Immediate, very crisp, and just a two pound. You can run this trigger very, very fast on this guy. It is so much fun to be honest. Um, you know, I know some people have talked about the grips. They've said that they don't like the grips on these weapons. Um, personally, I like the grip a lot. Now I will say that as soon as I got it and shot like 100 rounds, that guy loosened right up. So. I uh, shot a bunch of Loctite into it, uh, retightened it, and it hasn't moved since. So you should probably do a little bit better of a job at that. Now, going back to the stock, of course, there are a lot of options out there. So of course, on the back, we can put on a variety of different mechanisms from a brace to a stock. Right here, we have a Zenico PT3. So what's pretty cool is that the mechanism, uh, they have an adapter in there that makes it work with the Vityaz or the KP9. So we can fold this guy down, and once it's folded, folded, it locks right into place, which is pretty dang cool. And that's a very cool little package. And of course, even cooler is you can still fire that weapon when that guy is folded. That is our stock right there. And again, that is still a little bit lower, so you probably will need a riser, especially if you're gonna have some type of optic like an EOTech. If you have a low mounted aim point, you're gonna be fine with that. But in this case, we have the riser about halfway up. This puts it at a really good height, not just for CQB shooting, but also for night vision shooting. Um, this is an awesome gun. Uh, I like it quite a bit of any uh, pistol caliber carbine I fired. It's probably um, right there, maybe even number one. Um, I've grown to really love this gun over the last couple months of firing it and even compared to other pistol caliber carbines that I fired I found that they've lacked somewhat um, Due to the ease of use how nice the recoil is because that's one thing that surprised me on a straight blowback weapon 
The recoil is pretty mild, and I understand I have a lot of shit on there, but even compared to other weapons when they're loaded down. So if you get the chance to you know, get your hands on the KP9, I would really recommend it. This has been an utterly reliable and utterly dependable weapon for me in every single way. But the thing about it is despite everything, if you're not training, none of this is going to matter. So make sure that you get out there and you get training. Without training, this weapon will just absolutely suck. Tons of great places to get training, guys. Haley Strategic, Cogworks, Bear Solutions. Get out there because the thing about it is, is this is a tool, you are the weapon. Make sure that you hone that weapon. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Appreciate you guys so much. And we've got nothing else for you guys today. All right, final thing. Dad advice from, what do they call you? Face mask, dad? Talk, talking balaclava. <laughs> talking balaclava, go ahead. Um, I don't have any kids. How can we, how can I do dad advice? You got children on the internet, so. <sighs> um, as someone who has kids all over the internet, apparently, um, I would say treat people nicer than you think you do. That's well, actually really bad. No, that sounds really good. Actually. I like, I like, no, that sounds really good. I like that um, quite a bit. Actually. Okay, yeah, treat you don't my... get edits on this. Segment. Yeah. You don't, you get zero ah. edits. Yeah. You're God. <laughs> God. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for coming on the channel, man. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Anytime. Love you guys. Stay tuned for next week. We're done. God, God. damn it. Damn it.